Welcome back to Shin Megami Tensei 3. This will be part 6, and like it shows up in the beginning of the video, this is post-commentary. I've already edited the video. I'm just going to be commentating over it uh, here. I am heading to the Cathedral of Shadows because I want to fuse. Because, you know, that's what you do when you go to the Cathedral of Shadows. Here I will be fusing Nekamata and Eros to make Burb. Uh, babbed Katha. I, I took a moment here to look at the moves and I just decided it has Anti-Mind and Secunda. That, that looked pretty good. But no, me. It, it defaults to no. going to have some fun together. And then I decide to fuse Archangel purely for the fact that he looks cool. He should hopefully be showing up here soon. Yeah, there he is. That's, uh, in Persona, it's always a, a Persona I'd like to get in, so I wanted to get him here. And it turned out to not be the best idea. But we will see that later in the video, of course. Oh, here I was originally explaining that sometimes you don't want just an AoE version of an attack. Uh, just in case of those specific instances where you have, uh, you're facing a demon team, where one of them might be weak to fire, but someone else might drain fire, reflect fire, and then that pretty much just takes your turn, because it always takes, like, the worst. Like, even if you were to get an extra turn from hitting the weakness, if somebody drains it, I'm pretty sure that would just end your turn, like, end your round and go to the enemy's round. Oh yeah, I went back to Ginza because I forgot what I was supposed to be doing at this part, but then I remember I'm supposed to go meet uh, Gozu Tenno up at the Mantra headquarters. You know, while I have you here, and that way I'm not just... Uh... Oh, we're going to be meeting somebody very important soon. Uh... You'll see. It's him! Come on, chat type poggers. It's him. He's showing up. No, but uh, I wanted to talk about some things I've been thinking about in terms of SMT3 that I don't really bring up in commentaries because I keep getting distracted. Uh, never mind the fact that Dante's following. He does that. Uh, I was talking about buffs and debuffs and how I think it's uh, pretty boring. I mean, I'm going to be starting this battle with buffs and debuffs, but that's because it's a boss fight. And I kind of don't want to take... I don't want... I didn't want to uh, take, like an hour or so on the same boss. I just said screw it. But I wanted to talk about buffs and debuffs and how it is more strategic than I think it is because it depends on your enemy's strategy. If they're, for example, lowering your attack, I don't think it's worth it to raise your attack to try to neutralize it. I think instead it's better just to lower their defense. So that way it sort of evens out 
they lower your attack, but you lower their defense, so it kind of neutralizes their debuff. So, you know, there is a, a bit more strategy in it. If they're lowering your speed, just lower their speed in return. But, uh, I, it's still kind of like a boring way to feel like I, like, kind of have to play this way, and maybe I don't actually have to. But that's kind of what I see in, like, YouTube comment sections. Although, don't worry, I know you're not supposed to read those, but... Usually what I see in the comments from people who seem to have a lot of knowledge of SMT3 is that, yeah, the best way to play this is through buffs and debuffs. Which makes me wonder how this playthrough would have gone if I had been totally blind. You know, I definitely probably wouldn't have beaten Thor in my first try, that's for sure. But yeah, here uh, I realized that since Dante has... Oh, I forgot the name of it. He has an item that lets him remove all debuffs on him. So I decide that buffs are more important. And again, that's that strategy coming into play. I, now, I don't know how many times he can do it, but I figure it's best not to waste the MP. We only have so much of it. Just, uh, instead of debuffing, let's just buff our party. To be fair, I probably don't have to stack, like, three different debuffs on the main character, but it's like, you know, by having it on the main character, I can just make sure I have them regardless of my team. But here we're uh, fighting Dante. It's about time I talked about fighting Dante. Uh, you've, you've seen a couple of his moves. He has uh, E and I, which if you don't know, stands for Ebony and Ivory. Ivory. The, the two guns. Yeah, this is a pretty simple boss fight. I think he only uses physical type attacks. I don't think he has any elemental magical spells at his disposal. At least not that he ended up using in this fight. And here's where I realized it was so weird that no demons in this current comp have Dia. Normally, there are so many things I would look forward to when I'm like playing Persona. It's like, one... One person has to always have Dia, you know, I have to have, like, every element on my side. And here, I, I find that to be less important. Also, I don't know what that 750 means. I don't think he's healing or anything. I don't know where that's coming from. Oh, unless, uh, it's... he's building up... He, maybe he has like a secret devil gauge, like instead of MP he has a devil gauge and that's what that 750 means. It's like building up, but it's like, why is the number so high? I don't understand. Here I decided that if he's gonna lower a defense constantly, I'm just gonna try to make his attacks miss. Yeah, I believe Provoke, even though it lowers your defense, I think it's uh, one of those things where it lowers your defense, but also raises your attack to make up for it. Uh, sort of like, I believe, what Taunt does. Oh, I forgot to look up. Oh, that bird only took like 32 damage from that. But, uh, I forgot to look up which Devil May Cry game was the newest by this point. I want to say three, but I'm not entirely sure. It might have been just one. I don't know what year Nocturne came out. But, uh, I'm surprised that move's called Bullet Time. I mean, I've only played Devil May Cry 3, and I have beaten that one. And it's hard, but... <laughs> but I've beaten Devil May Cry 3. I'm surprised they didn't call that move Jackpot. Pretty sure that's an actual move in Devil May Cry. Jackpot. Pretty sure that also involves guns.
Yeah, the boss fights in this are just kind of flaccid. They just sort of go down. There's no, like, uh, like cutscene at the end of the fight after you knock them down. I mean, like, well, there's this cutscene, but I mean, like, you know how when they get to phase two, there's a cutscene. There's, like, there's no, like, added flair. It's just they disappear like any other enemy. But I get it, this is a lower budget game. But so for like it's presumably low budget, it still looks really good. It's just sort of like when you beat a boss, like there is that satisfactory feeling, but there's no like flash to it. It, it just sort of feels like oops. Honestly, I kind of find some of the enemy comps in the Mantra headquarters a bit harder than Dante. Dante was a pretty simple fight. Just keep your keep your defense up, keep healed up, you know, just standard stuff. But here against like these uh Onis? Is that what they are? Yeah, I don't know what it is. I just had so much trouble with the Mantra headquarters. Like, spoiler alert, I didn't die at all. But, like, they were just, like... My party just slowly dwindles down. And I would assume there's a place to heal in here, but I don't find it. Awesome, man. I'm really, I'm really liking this counter move. Just being able to get that little bit extra damage on their turn is really useful. Yeah, so far this game has been a challenge, like, definitely nothing feels like a cakewalk, but I always heard after Matador, this game gets, like, you know, it lives up to its reputation as being this stupidly hard bullshit RPG, and I'm pretty sure at some point that may happen, but it just goes to show you, don't, don't always believe the internet. It's the internet, a lot of stupid people use the internet. Please, thank you. Uh, we shall actually go down and check him out. Yeah, no worries. I'm sure the difficulty spike's coming. Probably with the next Fiend boss. But right now, I'm having a good enough time. Like, again, it, it's certainly challenging. You definitely have to come to this game prepared. But I... Besides Matador, I haven't died at all. I've gotten close to it. I've had some close encounters. But I think that's what makes the random encounters in this feel less arbitrary. Like, since they're, for the most, I mean, like, not all of them. Some of them you could just beat them in, like, a turn or two. 
or a round or two, whatever you want to call it. But eh, the fact that they are a challenge does keep me invested. Like I said before, I, I really enjoy the press turn system. I like it. I like how it has risk and reward. It really makes you want to think out and plan your turns. Whereas, like, uh, Persona, I do find the Persona gameplay fun, but it it just sort of feels like it dragged, or at least for me in Persona 5, because Persona 5's an hour, yeah, an hour and ten minutes. Yep, that's a really short game, you guys. <laughs> Persona 5 is 110 hours, and the gameplay, for me, just kind of stopped being engaging. I want to say the fifth palace, but the fifth palace in general is just awful. But I feel like this combat system will last- oh yeah, I got- oh, so many- so many pyrojacks. So much fire. But I, I feel like this combat system would have kept me more engaged in Persona 5's- although maybe that's mostly just because Persona 5 is- I played it on normal, and it was, for the most part, just a little too easy. I probably could have raised the difficulty. But I, it never occurred to me. I chose normal, and I stuck to normal the entire time. I do find it strange that Tarunda lowers physical and magical damage. But Tarakaja only raises physical damage, which that part makes sense. I understand Tarakaja raising physical. I don't understand Tarunda lowering magical. I mean, I get the point of Tarunda is to be damage debuff, but you would think there'd be like there's Makakaja. Makakaja raises magic. You would think there'd be Makunda to lower magic. You would think you'd have to use. Tarunda against physical enemies, and Marunda against magical. But maybe they just, uh, figured that was too many debuffs? And to be fair, again, I'm not entirely sure about this. I think the magic stat in general is both magic offense and magic defense, so maybe just Tarunda lowering magic attack. Uh, you know, like, it's supposed to be a damage debuff, but it doesn't mean their, like, magic stat goes down itself. So I, f I forget what status effect Archangel has. I think it's... It's not Bind. Bind, I think, would mean he would skip his turn. I think? I don't know. From what I'm seeing, because of how often he's been missing, I would assume his current status effect fucks with his agility or in some way, shape, or form. But that's just an observation. Uh, Kadoma right now is just being our... I would say our free medicine user, except I'm pretty sure medicines heal more than him, because I think Dia might heal based on magic stat. Because I'm pretty sure when Kadama uses Dia and when Eros uses Dia, Eros is Dia. Heals for more. Yeah, I really should have went back and bought items.
Hmm. Rakakaja, like the defense buff there. Does that also affect your your defense for like against magic as well, or is that purely physical? I'm pretty sure it's both physical and magical. Because I'm trying to think back to the Thor fight, but maybe Thor did so little damage because of Tarunda, and less so because of Rakakaja. I'm trying not to look up too much about this game because I kind of already came in not necessarily all that blind. I feel like it's almost false advertising to call this a blind playthrough. But I swear at some point I'm going to just go in and be like, I have no idea what to do. Pretty sure I'm going to get to the second fiend and just get absolutely destroyed. Here I'm considering the stat buffs given by certain Magatamas. Because of all the Pyrojacks I've been running into, I pick the one that gives magic and more vitality. Actually, no, I think I do it. Yeah, okay, yeah, I ended up picking up picking Narukami, the one we got from Thor, because that raises our strength and magic substantially. Also, I'd like to pick up some elemental spells for the... for... for Zany. Here's a fight I left in because of uh, how difficult it ended up being. Like, those guys got two crits in a row, although thankfully I got a dodge. My strategy has been, like, I've been trying to save my MP because you never know when you're going to seriously need it. I feel like going out of my way to debuff every group of enemies I run into is only going to lead to me starving for MP. So I try to avoid it as much as I can, but yeah, that, that berserk hurts. I'm trying to avoid using the muscle drink just because I don't know what side effect it gives. It might be, and I said might be, it might be like it gives you the equivalent of being taunted, like you raise your attack but you lower your defense. Yep, currently uh, two of them are down for the count and I have no revival beads because I believe I used up all my revival beads in, one, in that one demon negotiation. I don't actually try any 
team in negotiation in this part, like even the battle that cut out. Uh, actually, no, uh, that's not entire. well, I didn't actively begin the negotiation, but uh, I was fighting a Chatter Skull, and he came up to me, and he's like, Hey, if I give you 240 Maka, will you stop punching me? <laughs> then I said, yeah, and he gave me the 240 Maka. I presume eventually at one of these points, they're going to offer something, and then they're just going to betray me and be like, Haha, I lied! But for right now, that hasn't happened. But yeah, uh, I mean, I know it's already happened a couple of times, but I don't know if those are, like, scripted, or if it did really just happen at random, but I kind of wish there was a bit more moments where you're just beating up a demon. And I know I already brought this up before, because a friend of mine reminded me that I, I think he said something like that happens in Persona 5, or the demon, or the... Persona, whatever. We'll just come up to you and be like, Hey, can I just join your party? You're hitting me real hard, and I'm, I'm tired of being hit real hard. <laughs> but yeah, that... These brutes... These brutes hurt. Also, man, I miss having Warcry. Warcry is a really good debuff. It was on my Shasa. I believe that was the name of it. But here I just decided to retreat. I figure since I'm going up to meet Gozu Tenno, it might potentially be a boss fight. Like right after, well, not literally right after fighting Dante, but pretty close to it. So, you know, because I'm expecting random encounters on the way, I decided to pick like a good party, but not like my strongest, and because I don't want them to get too beat up before the fight, because I don't have many items. Also, yes, the game really does just make you sit here and wait for these floors to go up, which honestly, not nearly as bad as Paper Mario Thousand Year Door. That moment where you have to literally go through that one character saying I'm sorry 100 times. Here I notice the, the box in the corner of the room, and I want it, because I'm greedy and I need anything I can get. And it's a good thing I went for it, it's 3,000 Maka. I am so bad at handling my Maka. Yeah, despite the fact that I did say I try not to use too many buffs debuffs, I still do it a little bit, just to, just to make sure I take less damage.
you know, this uh, SMT3 is really a game that wants you to resource manage. And that's something I'm typically very into. Uh, unless it's like survival horror. I'm just added survival horror. But I do typically like the idea of managing my resources, which is why I like card games ish. I would make the joke, where's my Shin Megami Tensei card game, but that that is a thing. It's a Japan-only... I forget what system it was on. But there's actually, like, a ton of SMT games. Like, uh, I was talking about all the spin-offs. I forgot about uh, Digital Devil? Digital Devil Saga. I think I forgot to mention that one. And that one kind of has, like, the same art style-ish as, like, Nocturne. It's dark. It has this, like... It has less of a dreamlike vibe to it and more of a post-apocalypse. Like, I think the, the area where your characters live is called the Junkyard? Or is that just the world? But, uh, yeah, that one... Atlas on the PS2 went through kind of a depressing phase. And then Persona 4 came out. Persona 4 made good bank, from what I understand. And then Persona 5 made double that bank. Did I say Persona 4 made double the bank Persona 4? I meant to say Persona 5. <laughs> Yeah, there's also these, uh, I remember playing a little bit of it. I think it's like a Game Boy Advance, like, kids Shin Megami Tensei. I forget what it's called, Devi Kids? I know there's like a, there's like two versions of it. I think it's like the Sun Book and Moon Book? I I'm kind of really interested in it. It's because it seems like it, it's still SMT. It's just like aimed at a younger audience. But I, I remember summoning a demon and the demon goes, I'm gonna kill you. And it's like, oh. Yeah, here I was terrified. If I hit, I declined that he would. Like, this would engage in a boss fight, but then I was like, eh, it probably doesn't matter what I answer, a boss fight's probably coming. But, uh, no, there's no, there's no boss fight. You know, I've been realizing, I haven't really talked about the story of Nocturne. And I think this is the point where there kind of is one coming up. Uh, we're being ordered to attack Nihilo, but I, if possible, I want to team up with Nihilo because they seem like the better people. You know, uh, Candy Kong was able to hang out in a demon bar. She didn't get, like, absolutely murdered, so I kind of appreciate them for that, even though I don't know anything about her, but they seem kind of chill. But, uh, yeah, there just doesn't seem to be much going on. I went from place to place. I mean, I know there is still a story going on with the Candelabras. But, like, we haven't seen another fiend looking for one in a while, and now we're just sort of... meandering. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of really curious to see where Nocturne goes, because I haven't heard anything about the plot, although I'm pretty sure I heard it's more a game about its atmosphere. And it is a damn good atmosphere, though. But alright, we are going to be ending the part here. Yeah, see ya. Bye.